Hey, this is Manny with Not Waiting to Live, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to cut open the concrete in your basement floor without creating any dust. So if you're just a DIYer and you're thinking about taking an old circular saw or an angle grinder to your concrete floor, you're going to create so much dust that there's really a good chance you might have to get the ducts cleaned out of your, your central heating system. So this will be useful for any of those DIYers trying to install a new drain for a new sink or a toilet or a shower. And uh, I'll give my two cents about how to connect to the existing sewer stack in that basement as well, how to simply cover it up with some basic concrete tips. But uh, before you take on a project like this, there's really two ways that it can go wrong. One, the depth of the sewer stack isn't deep enough for you to bury a drain line. So there's a required slope to drains. Water runs downhill and uh, you typically need about a quarter inch a drop of the drain pipe for every foot. So for 10 feet, the pipe's gotta be two and a half inches higher on one side as it is on the other that's draining towards that sewer stack. But what happens is you, you find that big cast, maybe it's cast iron or maybe it's PVC in your basement. If that elbow turns right below grade, that's not enough depth for you to extend a drain very far out. Well, you certainly can't extend it uh, you know, 20 feet because then we're talking about five inches. You, that, you need to be conscious of that. So really a, a great place to start a project like this is to explore your own situation to understand how deep is that sewer pipe where you want to connect it to. Another thing you need to watch out for, the way that this could go wrong, that sewer pipe might not go in the direction that you think it is. So you might see the center stack and you see a drain might right next to it and you might think, well, the shortest distance is a straight line, they're disconnected. That is not always the case. That, that drain might meet somewhere else, zigzagging around uh, under that concrete floor and when you start opening this up you might be on a whole nother exploration cutting around different appliances that are already down there your furnace maybe there's posts in the way so really start by uncovering the connection point that you envision and work your way back now to open up the floor listen i've cut concrete with angle grinders i've cut granite you know with the circular saw in a pinch and live with that dust, you don't want, you want that life. Your lungs will thank you. So for this most recent project that I did, I bought the Medu saw, which is a skill saw that has a water hose attachment and a vacuum attachment. So I just use my standard rigid shop vac that I love to suck up the wet um, concrete filings and uh, it's awesome. I mean, the, the, the blade that I used, I used two different blades uh, to cut open this project. Um, one was just a rigid blade, seven inch standard uh, concrete masonry blade. Uh, then I, I used a more expensive one. I went through two blades in this project. The more expensive Bosch blade um, was, I think worked a lot better. It actually did work about twice as long. So just to cut out this 12 foot, trench was uh, went through two blades but the water knocking down that concrete dust the vacuum sucking it up and then taking a for this project i used a bauer demolition hammer which this is kind of like a heavy duty uh demolition hammer in terms of compared to like a, a little rotary hammer or a, a hammer drill um, but it, it's a lot smaller than a jackhammer. It's like 21 pounds as opposed to 30, 40, 50 pounds for a jackhammer. Did great, did the work to bust open this floor, two inches of concrete. Um, I, was, I got it from Harbor Freight. It's kind of like the knockoff. A Bosch version of this is um, at least several hundred dollars more. Um, and I think one with equivalent specs would be about $650. And I bought this with a two-year warranty for 335 bucks. I got the warranty because I really thought it was going to break on me, but honestly, five stars. So I cut this trench outline. Some people tell you don't need to do it, but I like it because it keeps the project clean. It helps control your cuts. And then when you do patch it, it's a little bit more appealing to the eye as opposed to creating this kind of 
crater because you're not really if you don't score the concrete you don't really control how it chips i mean it could just chip and chip and chip and you could walk it off into the abyss and uh, concrete disposal is a big part of this i mean when you do take out gravel and clay you can put some of that back in but you are going to have extra concrete that you need to dispose of so the the tighter closer the trench you can make the better the easier that makes your life um, a trenching tool that's super handy for something like this is a trench shovel. I use a five inch trench shovel for this. If you're really good, you can use like a four inch trench shovel. Um, but the for the drain, I use ABS pipe. Uh, for the main line, I use four inch just to connect between the cast iron, that stack that was there and the clay pipe drain that was there. So my cast iron stack, was four inch, which is about a typical size. You'll see a lot of standard fittings at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, go to that four inch. You'll see the clay, because typically four to six inches, but you need to understand that a clay four and six inches is different than a PVC or cast iron four and six inch. And so you'll see that distinction. If you're getting a coupling, a rubber coupling, a fern co coupling, to connect a cast iron pipe to a plastic pipe or a clay pipe, you need to understand that there is a different category, just a mistake that you could run into. When you, when you expose the pipe in the main drain, which if it's an older house, is gonna be um, uh, clay. If it's a newer house, it could be some plastic material. Uh, if it's clay, just cut that bell housing off, that little end of the, the, end of the, the clay pipe just cut it off. Um, when I cut these pipes off, I use a carbide blade. It's way better. Buy the more expensive blade for your Sawzall. It will make your life significantly easier. Uh, typically, depending on how big the, the stack is, um, so maybe it's four, six, eight inches, depending on, on the house, uh, these cast iron stacks, and they you can usually use one or two uh, carbide blades, but get the extreme carbide tip, whatever the hardest one that shows cast iron on the packaging. That's the best way to make your life easy. But this project is pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, you have to look in your specific municipality. They're going to have a building code on those couplings. So there's cheaper ones that um, only really have two metal bands more expensive ones that are probably twice the price that some municipalities might require for code where you're going to have to buy just a more expensive rubber coupling but i just use abs pipe other people might use pvc nowadays um, and i took a three inch line out to the uh, sewer or to the toilet and i actually the way i laid, laid, laid out this bathroom so it's about a six and a half inch by six and a half inch bathroom, which is about as small as you're going to want to make a bathroom just for uh, the purposes of, of moving around in it. Um, I aligned the shower drain with the toilet drain, and then I took the sewer or the drain line for the sink out of that same straight line. So put some thought into it in your plans before you start cutting into the concrete. I taped out the bathroom on the floor just to make sure I had a good sense of what every, where everything went. But I just took that uh, sink drain line off of, uh, uh, off of the main line and, and run it through the wall to connect the sink. Don't take my advice. I'm not a licensed plumber. You know, I just play one on YouTube. Um, it's, don't take my advice as far as laying out specific uh, spacing or anything like that. You'll have to look at other people that have commentary about mistakes to avoid. But when it comes time to cover up the trends that you created, uh, if the pipe does stay below grade as you intended, I just use some crack resistant commercial grade quick creep, mix it up in a five gallon bucket. Um, every around 150 pounds is equivalent to around a cubic foot of, of space of concrete to fill. So I do recommend using a concrete mixer um, in terms of like the handheld one for a project like this. You can use a drill, it'll work. You will burn out your, your motor on your drill over time and it doesn't work as well, um, but it, it can work. You can do it by hand in a wheelbarrow, but I don't recommend that. Uh, this, 
for this project, I just used a rigid mixer. Um, love the way it works, makes my life way easier. And a project like this is too small to lug down like one of those drums that you, you mix for concrete and like landscaping, things like that. One of those like five cubic foot ones. You don't need that for this project. So I just mix 50 pounds at a time in a five gallon bucket, put the water in first, put in the concrete over top of it, mix it up, slop it down. Because I cut out these clean trenches, I just used an 18 inch finish trowel to both level it out and then smooth it out. So I just kept the concrete on the wetter side um, and uh, that gave me some something to work with. I'm by no means a pro, but this is just a nice, simple uh, job to kind of level it out. It doesn't need to be perfect for this situation for me. And then for my project, I actually, my, my drain on this project was not deep enough. So I'm gonna cover up the floor. Um, I'm gonna put a subfloor on above where the pipes are because my toilet fitting uh, could not be flush while maintaining the appropriate slope. So that is tedious, it's a problem, but again, that's why I bring it up. It's something you need to be aware of in advance um, rather than dealing with a surprise like that later.